so much, Carol. Uh, good morning. My name is Emmanuel Caudillo, Senior Advisor to the White House Hispanic Prosperity Initiative in Washington, D.C., and my fellow judges are. Good morning. I'm Jen Howell, Co-Executive Director of Virginia Civics. You guys have a very early morning, and I am very impressed you're here. I also just wanted to say I pulled out my James Madison action figure just for you guys, so he's here in spirit. <laughs> Good morning and congratulations. Uh, my name is Tom Tinder and I'm an attorney from Charleston, West Virginia. Hi, we are Team Madison. We represent Mr. Bannister's seventh period class. I'm Danica Ferris. And did you know that James Madison had no biological children of his own? His wife, Dolly, had a son in a previous marriage, John Payne Todd, and Madison helped raise him from the age of two. I am Lily Dotson, and did you know that Madison was introduced to his wife, Dolly, by Aaron Burr? I am Mackenzie Eldred, and did you know James Madison never had a job out of politics? Wonderful, wonderful. And may uh, uh, inter oh, yeah, you introduce your teacher. Um, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing those, those ex uh, excellent facts. Uh, Jen, I don't know if you have a, a James Madison fact you'd like to share. Um, only that uh, his stepson, Payne Todd, really lived up to his name, Payne. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's get started here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll, I'll read, read the question, and then once I'm finished reading the question, um, you may begin with your presentation. Uh, no society, certainly not a large and heterogeneous one, can fail in time to explode if it is deprived of the arts of compromise. No good society can be unprincipled and no viable society can be principle ridden. Do you agree or disagree with this opinion? What compromises were made at the Constitutional Convention of 1787? What are the benefits and costs of those compromises? How would you distinguish between someone who is unprincipled and someone who is principled ridden? You, you, may, you may now begin. There were several compromises that came to life at the Constitutional Convention. These include the Three-Fifths Compromise, Tariff Laws, and the Commerce Clause. The defining moment that resulted was the Great Compromise, the benefit being the establishment of the Constitution. Great Compromise created two parts of Congress, the Senate and the House of Representatives. The benefits of this compromise were that the smaller states got their way with the New Jersey plan and the big states got their way with the Virginia plan. The end result were three branches of government. Article one, the legislative branch, responsible for making the laws. Article two, the executive branch, led by the president, responsible for enforcing the laws. Article three, the judicial branch, and responsible for interpreting laws. The three-fifths compromise was made over slavery, which stated that every five enslaved people, blacks, would count as three people in terms of population and representation in Congress. The, the southern states supported this because to gain representation in Congress, allowing the southern states to gain power in the House of Representatives as the black population increased the representation. The cost of this compromise was slavery. The, primer the framers were debated on this issue and the division of supporting slavery would continue to widen as the South became more determined to keep slavery <clears throat> Excuse me. And the North was moving away from it. When the framers wrote, when the framers wrote Article One, Section Two, Clause Three, of the Constitution, they didn't use the word slave or slavery. Instead, they just wrote three fifths of all persons when referring to slave slaves. Today, the three fifths compromise has been stricken from the Constitution. Tariff dispute was settled with Congress having the power to place tariffs on imports and northern desire, and as stated earlier, the South gained the demands on the issue with a three-fifths compromise. Congress would also be in control of both interstate and foreign trade. These powers are listed in Article 1, Section 8 and 9 of the Constitution. Government is bad. The election was rigged. Trump was robbed. The people have spoken. Democracy has won. Trump lost. Deal with it. The compromise conquers all, honors peace, and encourages equality for all people. The difference between the unprincipled and the principle written is the following. The unprincipled will exploit the rights of others for personal gain. The unprincipled disrespects the rule of law. The unprincipled lacks integrity, the common good, and civic virtue. Simply put, the unprincipled is all about themselves, not about the good of the whole for all of society. 
The principal person will and can follow principles or rules as long as they with, are within their set of principles. However, this could, if pursued, be led to a point of violating somebody else's rights. A principal person not only displays but respects morality, doing the right thing, and thinking and acting on behalf of the general welfare of society. Rule of law is obeyed, followed, and respected. What is good for all can be good for one. We are in this together, and together we can resolve the differences that we may have. As Jimmy Stewart once stated, when the legend becomes fact, print the legend. This has led to the fake news tendency in today's society. And simply put, it has put a wedge in the democratic process when it comes to the ruling body of government. The motto of the U.S. is e pluribus unum, out of many, one. Simply put, this is what America needs to return to. Are we up to the challenge? Speaking for a generation, I certainly hope so. I have faith that we can do this. This is necessary and... Uh-oh. We would like to say that anything we said, demonstrated, or had as a prop does not necessarily reflect on our personal opinions, Lakeside Middle School's personal opinions, or the Nine Mile communities. And as compromising as this may be, that concludes our presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your presentation. Now we're going to go on to our discussion uh, portion of of, of, our, of of the session. And so my first my first question is. Um, compromise is often called an art. Um, is this an apt uh, description? Uh, why or why not? I, I would personally say that that's a pretty good description of what compromise can be like labeled under because it's not necessarily easy. For instance, if you take into perspective the three-fifths compromise, they had to, of course, give up some things and uh, take in some things such as the North had to continue to allow the South to uh, allow slavery, but then they also got what they wanted with the um, uh, tariff and commerce uh, laws. To add on to what my colleague stated, I believe that uh, compromise is an art because it takes time to learn and to perfect, and you have to know a good balance between um, getting what you want and letting others have their way. Great, thank you. Do you think it's become more difficult for Americans to compromise over some of today's major political issues? And if so, why do you think it's become more difficult? I think that today compromise has become a lot harder than it was back then because they have to, in compromise, you have to re represent the two sides of what you're compromising over. And that can be hard, like it was hard back then, but it's harder today because we have because we have social media and things can spread. And so people's opinions can be influenced by social media. To add on, um, I believe that compromise is harder today because there is so much more division and people taking sides um, with, with, as Mackenzie said, social media and other things. Oh, I think, Tom, did you freeze? All right, we can, we can just- keep... One of the compromises, one of the compromises uh, of our founders was the ele electoral college. There's, there's now some debate whether there should be changes in the electoral college or we should have election uh, by popular vote. Uh, what is your, Opinion and I think that the electoral college it isn't really needed today because the electoral college doesn't really represent the voting of the people. So the people can vote for who they would like, but electors they could vote differently and not represent the people at all. So in my opinion, the electoral college isn't needed today. We should, we should vote by popular vote instead. I believe that the argument for changing electoral college is very similar uh, or changing it to a proportional um, voting or by popular vote. It's very similar to the equal representation versus proportional representation in Congress when they were first deciding um, the 
electoral college favors the smaller and more rural areas and popular vote favors um, larger me metropolitan areas. I agree with my colleagues. This next question, uh, let's build upon uh, social media. It was brought up in one of the responses here. And so um, how has social media made it difficult to compromise? And I wanna add another part to this question is, what are, you, what are some ideas you think could, um, that you would do in order to, um, in order to fix that? I think social media has impacted us today in, because um, social media, like they can spread fake news and so people won't necessarily know what's true and what's a lie and it impacts it by it can influence um, the influence people's opinions uh to add on i think social media with the lies and knowing what's true or not um, people just attack other people's opinions um, and it causes more division and I don't think that's good for compromise when people don't want to trust other people anymore. So a lot of times our, our politicians will, will make decisions based on what the, what the party wants, right? So they'll vote just Republican or Democrat, right? Do you consider party line votes principled or not? I would personally consider party line votes pretty uh, principled because it falls within their beliefs. For instance, if you take into gun rights, one party wants the gun rights and one doesn't. So when they go to vote, they're gonna vote for what the whole party and the majority of the entire party wants versus what just they want. I think it's unprincipled because uh, if you disagree with maybe one thing, um, and but you agreed with the rest of the party on everything else, and you believe that um, this one thing was better for the people if they didn't do it, and you just went along with your party and um, did do it, I don't think that's very principled. Talking about uh, principled and unprincipled, would you uh, name a, a national leader that you think is either principled or unprincipled and why you feel that way? Can we have, uh, or can you rephrase the question, please? Sure, sure. You know, our founders, some of them were characterized as being uh, principle ridden and others were uh, characterized as being unprincipled. Uh, just pick a national leader and based upon whether you think they're principled or unprincipled, tell us who that national leader is and why you feel that they're either principled or unprincipled. I would say George Washington, even though he's not around anymore, obviously, uh, was a pretty principled leader and he led in his best interest in what thought would be best for our nation and set lots of examples and was a very good thing. Like he put the people's interest and his interest together and did what was best for our country. To add on to what my colleague said, um, George Washington, he set many precedents for the people and for future presidents that would come. He set many pre precedents of what the president should be and how he should represent the people and that in my opinion, helped kind of form the executive branch, which is the, um, which is the um, president, basically. All right, I want to try to throw one quick question here. Um, looking at uh, the modern day issues facing us today, what are some issues you believe that we should uh, compromise on? Oh, no, no, we won't. Oh. No. That would be a thought that we will uh, think about. But let's let's throw a round of applause. Oh, thank you so much for a great presentation. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the, the 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 props coming in the middle of it. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for, for sharing that. Um, and no, I, I I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. I, I truly did, and and I thought that you all did 
a great job. I, I love how you made things such as, you know, that the, the heart of, you know, not being a compromise, you know, it's been like a wedge in our, in our American, our democratic process and, and, and good, some good insight that you, that you shared there with it. And so I'd like to um, uh, continue to, for you to continue engaging this, to engage in this question. That last question I said, even though we you didn't get a chance to answer it, think about that. Think about that as you continue on in your educational journey um, in working in civic engagement about issues saying, you know what, I'm tired of this one side, one side, all I do is yell at each other. Where, where can we find middle ground in order to obtain a solution to that? And, and that's, and I encourage you to, to think of those issues and to work on those issues. I think that you never, you never know where, it, it, you never know where it'll leave, where it will lead you. And so I, I commend you on that. So uh, I'm going to give it to my uh, fellow judges to, to comment, but thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, of all of your presentation that you've uh, shared the past two days and I wish you the best. You guys, that was such an enjoyable conversation and really thought provoking. I, I really have enjoyed our time together over the last couple of days. Your opening statements are so engaging and, you know, it, it just, it draws us into this conversation in, in a pretty unprecedented way. Um, I really enjoyed in your opening how many references to the Constitution you put in there, because this isn't an easy question to really tie back to specific parts of the Constitution, but you guys managed to do that in a really effective way. Um, and, I, and I really actually, I liked the print the legend quote, that one stuck out to me because um, I've actually used that in classes that I've taught at University of Virginia. So that was, um, that really kind of spoke, spoke to me personally and, and you guys really perfectly placed it in the context of this question. Um, you guys are passionate about these topics and that is so refreshing for us to see and you can speak about them in a, in a very intelligent and advanced way. And um, I, I will end on this to say that uh, I think we all have a bit of a reverence for Madison, but I think he might have been wrong in, in at least one place. And the one place I'm thinking of right now is uh, he said that enlightened statesmen will not always be at the helm. But I think as long as you guys keep going with things like this and keep thinking in the directions that you're going and you become the, the next leaders of this country, enlightened statesmen will be at the helm. So. Congratulations on a job well done. Well, first of all, uh, let me uh, congratulate uh, your teacher for all of the leadership um, uh, that's been provided in getting you all prepared for this. And, and then let me also um, congratulate you. That was uh, a uh, a wonderful presentation, and uh, this has been a wonderful session with you. Uh, I was I was anticipating uh, what props you were going to use, and when you got a little bit into it, I thought, "Oh, we're not going to get props today," you know. And then, or in the middle, or towards the end, you came with the props. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, they were they were right on the money, and and that's what you, you know. You just don't have props to have props, you have props to add to your presentation. And you did a very good job both yesterday and today with that. Um, I, I agree with the, the comments uh, that have been made by uh, my colleagues. Um, and I thought you did a good job with the uh, opening four minute presentation and in responding to our questions. And I do want to emphasize it in that I really liked your opening presentation where you went from person to person with short, uh, concise, important points that you made. That, that's a, um, you ended your presentation by uh, talking about hope and faith. And let me just say to you that you give us hope uh, and you give us faith in our future. Uh, your teacher and you are inspiring uh, and, and with with young people like you coming up um, and with you having uh, hope and faith in, in your future, uh, I can tell you that uh, you give us hope and faith in our future. Uh, please continue uh, to be leaders in your schools and in your uh, communities and in your state. And then we will have a very uh, good future. 
congratulations to you uh, and the best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for your time today.